Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I've always been interested in knowing what year a company was founded. I've always found it to be a cool little tidbit of information. However, I cringe whenever a company initially established in the year 1977 decides to constantly push out a 2D animated show with the word LOUD in the title. Ugh. Now, SpongeBob SquarePants is Nickelodeon's mascot, but everybody knows that. For those people born in the mid-2000s, have you wondered what Nickelodeon was like before Spongebob? The Rugrats. Today, I'll be going over what Nickelodeon was like before Spongebob came out on May 1st, 1999, specifically when it was launched and some of its properties before the aforementioned date. Keep in mind, this will mostly be Nickelodeon, not Nick Jr. or Nick at Night. There's also way too many shows that came out at this time, so I can't talk about everything from that point. Without further ado, let's start. Nickelodeon was first tested on December 1st, 1977 when Warner Cable Communications launched Qubit, the first two-way major market interactive cable TV system launched in Columbus, Ohio. It was originally called Pinwheel Network and carried a TV show called Pinwheel. On April 1st, 1979, Nickelodeon officially launched initially distributed to Warner Cable across the country and launched as the first ever all-children's network. The name Nickelodeon was proposed by Joseph Ozzy, a creative director and creative designer from New York. He saw the word as a natural fit for this proposed children's channel. These days, it feels like all Nickelodeon airs is Spongebob and this, but back then there was so much more variety with their programs. There were game shows, drama series, variety programs, sketch comedy, sitcoms, scurvy, everything except guts and gore in order to maintain its children's channel status. Variety shows were a majority of what aired during the 80s, and there's way too many to mention here. For those who don't know, a variety show is a program that consists of several forms of entertainment such as sketch comedy, musical performances, juggling, etc. As previously mentioned, it aired Pinwheel throughout the late 70s when it was first being tested, which was also the first program broadcast on the network. I wonder why the program and the network were initially named after this. Pinwheel was a puppet show in the vein of Sesame Street, where live actors interact with puppets teaching standard children lessons like Sharon. There were also variety shows like By the Way and America Goes Bananas, which came out on April 1st, 1979, when the network officially relaunched as Nickelodeon. Variety shows continued throughout the 80s and had shows like Kids Rights, Against the Odds, Mr. Wizard's World, Turkey Television, and so many more I can't mention here. Nickelodeon also started standard live action shows in the 80s, starting with The Third Eye on January 8th, 1983. It was an anthology series which had science fiction serials from the UK and New Zealand which all focus on characters with physical abilities. However, Nickelodeon struggled due to a lack of successful programs and in 1984 they reported a loss of $10 million. After this, MTV president Bob Pittman asked Fred Seibert and Alan Goodman to reinvigorate the company. The same year, this Splat logo was created and became the most iconic logo of the network, even to this day. New channel IDs were created and the rebranding came into place in October 1984 and within the next 6 months, Nickelodeon would become the dominant channel for kids programs. The network started broadcasting game shows in 1986. The very first game show was Double Dare, which came out on October 6, 1986. This game show involves answering trivia questions while completing messy stunts. Throughout the rest of the 80s and into the 90s, there were other game shows like Finders Keepers, Make the Grade, Nickelodeon Guts, Legends of the Hidden Temple, and Figure It Out, the latter getting a short-lived revival in 2012. On June 7, 1990, Nickelodeon Studios was opened by Nickelodeon. It was located in Universal Studios Florida and was both an attraction and TV production facility. Many of its sitcoms and game shows would be filmed here. Live action comedy started for the network with Hey Dude on July 14, 1989 and have been much more prevalent since this point. As the 90s went on, more sitcoms were broadcast and less variety shows came out. More sitcoms that came out in the 90s were The Adventures of Pete and Pete, Welcome Freshman, Clarissa Explains It All, Salute Your Shorts, The Secret World of Alex Mack, My Brother and Me, Cousin Skeeter, and my personal favorite because I watch this a lot online, Q. 
Keenan and Kel. There was also a sketch comedy series called All That, which came out in 1994, which was very popular throughout the rest of the 90s with its actors, musical performances, and sketches. It continued in the 2000s and wasn't as good as it used to be, and now has been revived in 2019, and it blows. At this point you may be wondering, Mikey, when did the animated programs come out on this channel? Well, I'm glad you asked, and to answer your question, they started in 1991. On August 11th, 1991, Nickelodeon launched an original line of animated shows called Nicktoons, and the first three of those shows were Doug, Rugrats, and The Ren and Stimpy Show. These shows gained success in 1992, which led to the creation of another Nicktoon called Rocco's Modern Life in 1993 which also quickly gained success. The Nicktoons continued with Ah, Real Monsters, Hey Arnold, Cub Lamb, The Angry Beavers, Cat Dog, and The Wild Thornberries. There was also Oh Yeah Cartoons, an animation showcase that allowed cartoonists to create a series of seven minute cartoon shorts, which ran from 1998 to 2001. Some of the shorts here would later become full on shows like The Fairly Odd Parents, Chalk Zone, and My Life as a Teenage Robot during the 2000s. The cartoons were a big hit on this channel. Out of the Nicktoons at this time, Rugrats and Hey Arnold were the only two that remained on air from the 90s until the 2000s. Both ran until 2004, but the Rugrats aired longer from August 11, 1991 to August 1, 2004, almost exactly 13 years and was the longest lasting Nicktoon until Spongebob ran for over 13 years before the end of 2012. The Rugrats ran for 9 seasons and 3 theatrical movies and was the most popular Nicktoon for a long time. Even to this day, the cartoons are a bigger hit on the channel. Of course there has still been a good live action show every now and then, but plenty will argue that the network was at its best during the 90s and early 2000s, and in my opinion, the network lost its luster starting in the latter half of 2013. Sure, not everything during this time was good, but Nickelodeon as a whole was filled with good comedy and amazing shows. Even to this day, Spongebob is the most popular show and is currently still airing. Despite this, there has been talk about reboots of older Nickelodeon programs. As previously stated, all that which was popular during the 1990s and went downhill during the 2000s has been revived, but it's nowhere near as good as it was during the 90s or even the 2000s. The reboots may do well, but in my opinion that will only happen if they're written to recapture the magic from back in the day. While Spongebob is still on, I don't know what'll happen in the future, not just for Spongebob, but for Nickelodeon in general. Not only has this happened, but the Camp Coral spinoff has been delayed also and is coming to CBS All Access as well. I do have to say that no matter what happens in the future, the past of Nickelodeon will always be nice to look back on, especially for those younger adults who stopped watching the channel before Spongebob even came on. So that was a basic look at the network before Spongebob debuted in May 1st, 1999. Of course I didn't cover every excruciating detail about this topic, but I covered most of what I wanted to talk about. In my opinion, the past is more interesting than the present, since these days it feels like Nickelodeon is just oversaturated with Spongebob and... The variety of programs of old school Nickelodeon will always be more interesting and memorable to even the diehard Spongebob fanboy that is me, and I'm grateful that Spongebob wasn't as impacted with memes and acronyms and whatnot that most of the other modern Nickelodeon shows were. Of course, Spongebob is the meme king, and I have absolutely no problem with that, but one thing I hope everybody can agree on is that the social media culture of these things is what kills the humor of modern Nickelodeon programs. You deserve this. Man, I'm good at this.